Around a dry pool in the middle of the forest, trees had grown in a curved line, and about a thousand Chola warriors had stepped into the gap. For their meal, the collective corn was roaring in huge tents over a fire that had thrown flames on huge stone slabs. Pans and pans were sizzling. The aroma emanating from these made the soldiers' tongues water. They were engaged in dance and song extravaganzas to entertain themselves until the rice was cooked. At this time, their loyal princes also arrived, and the joy of the soldiers was beyond measure. The commander of the border guard took great pains to maintain order among them. He made everyone sit in a row in a half-shaped circle in silence. They had cut down a huge giant tree and left only its base sticking out slightly above the ground. The prince came and sat on that underwood throne. Now he was not dressed like an elephant. He was wearing a golden crown on his head, the rings on his poochas, pearl garlands on his chest and sat on a silk pedestal. Around him sat the commander of the border guard, Vandiyathevan, and all were Kadian. Ilayla Singan Sari Trakuthu, which had been organized to entertain the prince, began. At this time the Chola warriors occupied a large part of Sri Lanka, while the Tamil warriors once conquered Eland a thousand years ago. Ilayla Singan was the leader of Adamil soldiers at that time. Pursued by him, the king of Sri Lanka went and hid in the hilly country for some time. His son's name was Dushtakamanu. He is a wicked hero. He dreamed for a long time to take back Sri Lanka from Ilayla Singan. When Aviran was a small child, one day he was lying on the bed with his arms and legs folded. His mother said, Child! Why are you lying cross-legged like this? Just lying down with your legs and arms outstretched. She said. Then Dush Takamanu said, Mother! Tamil soldiers are crowding me on one side. On the other side the sea is pressing in. What shall I do? That is why I am lying with my body crossed. He said. When such a warrior reached the age of a bull, the forces that had gathered and scattered scattered. Then Dush Takamanu made a strategy. Ilayla went to the lion and stood face to face, O king. My small army scattered before their great army. I am the only one left. He was born in a warrior clan. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May this kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who wins among us, let the other get heroic heaven. He said. On the other side the sea is pressing in. What shall I do? That is why I am lying with my body crossed. He said. When such a warrior reached the age of a bull, the forces that had gathered and scattered scattered. Then Dush Takamanu made a strategy. Ilayla went to the lion and stood face to face, O king. My small army scattered before their great army. I am the only one left. He was born in a warrior clan. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May this kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who wins among us, let the other get heroic heaven. He said. On the other side the sea is pressing in. What shall I do? That is why I am lying with my body crossed. He said. When such a warrior reached the age of a bull, the forces that had gathered and scattered scattered. Then Dush Takamanu made a strategy. Ilayla went to the lion and stood face to face, O king. My small army scattered before their great army. I am the only one left. He was born in a warrior clan. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May this kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who wins among us, let the other get heroic heaven. He said. When such a warrior reached the age of maturity, the forces that had gathered the forces were scattered and scattered. Then Dush Takamanu made a strategy. Ilayla went to Singan and stood face to face and said, O king! My small army has been scattered before your great army. I am the only one left. You are born in a clan of pure warriors. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May the kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who is victorious among us, and to the other, may the hero's heaven be his. He said that. When such a warrior reached the age of maturity, the forces that had gathered the forces were scattered and scattered. Then Dush Takamanu made a strategy. 
Ilayla went to Singan and stood face to face and said, O king! My small army has been scattered before your great army. I am the only one left. You are born in a clan of pure warriors. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May the kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who is victorious among us, and to the other, may the hero's heaven be his. He said that. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May this kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who wins among us, let the other get heroic heaven. He said. Therefore, I invite you to stand alone with me and fight hard. May this kingdom of Lanka belong to the one who wins among us, let the other get heroic heaven. He said. Ilayla Singan was amazed at such bravery and valor of Dush Tagamanu. So he agreed to fight alone with him. He strictly ordered his soldiers not to come in between and interrupt. A sudden war began. On hearing this news, Dush Takamanu's soldiers who had run away came back and joined. Everyone was staring blankly. There was a long war. Dush Takamanu fought furiously to get his birthright. Ilayla Singan had sympathy for the young man and did not fight using complete pain. So Ilayla Singan died. When Dush Takamanu was crowned, he built a temple for him at the place where Ilayla Singan died and praised his bravery and kindness. This rare historical performance was performed by the Chola warriors in the presence of Ilongo Arulmas Hivarmar. Dancing and singing were performed. Ilayla Singan acted so realistically that the hero who played the scene where he had given up his life seemed to have really fallen dead. The prince and the other soldiers who were looking on often exclaimed aha and cheered. While the play was going on, once the prince looked at Alvarkadian and said, Thirumalai. In the Tombala Cave Temple, the battle scene between Dush Takamanu and Alayla Singan has been painted as an immortal color picture. Have you seen that picture? He asked. No, sir. I saw them while we were coming through the streets of Tombala. There was no time to go into the cave temple, said Alvarkadian. Aha! You must see the sculptures in those cave temples too. There are so many sculptures in the country of Tirumala, St. Hamel. There are even greater miracles than them in this island of Sri Lanka, said the prince. Prince! The sculptures in this country can't go anywhere. You can take care of them whenever you want. But isn't it like seeing them? Wasn't it because we came at a good time that we were able to see them? Parthipendra Pallava, who had come here before us, was looking for them and returning saying not here. We saw him on the way. All Workadians said. Yes, even the commander told me that a good friend of mine had come and gone looking for him. Can you guess what he might have come for? That's for sure. Aditya Karagalar has sent him to bring them to Kanchi. Damn. You know. Here's your friend who has brought it so safely and you seem to know what's written on this piece of paper. They have written to their fathers to come to Padayara immediately. Prince! I was watching from the nearby flaghouse hidden in the flaghouse when Kundeva Devi privately wrote this letter and gave it to our Vanarkula warrior. Vandiyadeva from behind Tirumala pinched his back tightly. All Workadian slapped him on the back and said, This is a wicked forest, even at night the beetle bites. He said, the prince got a little angry and said, Sick! What is this business? Have you begun to show your skill in the name of my dear brother? Said. I have brought him here so safely as I have seen it. Prince! Lord Buddha knows the song I performed to save him from getting into trouble all along the way. If he had come through an Aradapura, he would certainly not have arrived here. He would have fought with someone on the way and died. That is why I brought him through the forest. There too. He tried to fight with Amadayana. I killed the Madayana with my staff and brought him safely to them. He said. Oh. So you came to Sri Lanka to bring him safely to me, what? No, sir. I have also brought them a message for my part. What is it? Tell me quickly. Said the prince. Prime Minister Anuradhar has sent word that it is advisable for them to stay in Sri Lanka for a little while longer. What do I ask if three seniors send messages three ways? 
Aromas Hivarmar said. At this point Vandiyadeva interrupted and said, Prince. Forgive me. What you should listen to is the word of your father. He said. Why do you say that? Because their hearts tell them to value their own words. Even if they don't listen to him, I must listen. The younger brat has ordered me to bring them anyway. Vandiyathevan said. Prince Vandiyathevan looked up and down and said, I have been doing penance for so many days to get such a heroic companion. Said.